A Karen makes her 40 year old son attack me in the middle of a pharmacy, so I use biological warfare to get revenge. Here's what happened. Subscribe to Am I the Jerk on YouTube and hit the bell to turn on notifications. Here's the backstory. I work 24 seven in healthcare in a medium sized hospital. This particular year, the flu shot everyone got missed the big one. As a result, everybody had the flu. Staff dropping like flies, either from having the flu or from looking after kids with the flu. Our department was running lean on staff already, so this wiped us out. As a dude with no kids who wasn't dying a slow sniffle death, I was suddenly in high demand to cover all the shifts. This resulted in a solid 21 day period of covering all the overnight shifts, which are 10 hours long each, with the minimum required rest periods. It sounds bad, but honestly it wasn't too terrible. Lots of flu patients in beds don't really require my department too frequently, so I made lots of overtime without being worked to death. But that last week, the flu finally caught up with me. The symptoms were pretty mild though up until my last overnight. Suddenly, all my symptoms were dialed right up. Mild sniffles, snore throat, to hacking cough, fever, blocked sinuses, and vomiting for the last four hours of my shift. Joy. One of the ED doctors was nice enough to check me out, diagnose me with the flu, and with the added bonus of a bacterial sinus and chest infection. He wrote me a very generous sick note and sent me on my way with a prescription for antibiotics for the chest infection. So off I go to the nearest pharmacy before running home and hiding from the world for 72 hours. So there I am waiting for my meds to be filled, aimlessly walking the aisles. If I sat down, I was going to go to sleep with my trusty basket that is slowly filling with purchases one makes when sleep deprived and ill. Lozenges, nasal spray, those diabetic jelly beans, why not? And of course, a bulk mix pack of band-aids because the 500 I have under the sink might not be enough. But then I see them. My girlfriend's brand of pads are on special. Special. The girlfriend I haven't seen properly in three weeks. Boyfriend points could be earned here. I mean, what girl doesn't see the romance in a 12 pack of pads? I'm scooping those suckers off the shelf like a madman, a row at a time. But in my exuberance, I accidentally knocked down some of the wrong sort of pads onto the ground. Wrong wings or something like that. Anyhow, I bend over and start returning the drop pads to the display when I feel a sharp jab to my shoulder. I'm a bit startled with my face so gummed up, my hearing is shot, and I didn't even hear anyone approaching. I come out, the crotch pad still in my hand, and turn to face an old lady, I guess in her early 70s. The old lady says, Um, excuse me, I need some help finding some product. I start shuffling to the side a bit so I'm not taking up the whole aisle and I say, sorry, I haven't seen any product, the one that she was referring to. Then the old lady being a bit huffy says, well, do you think you could look for it? Me, still not getting it, say, no, I mean, I'm just here putting these pads away. You could try finding someone that works here. I'm just shopping. Now the old lady looks pointedly at the pads still in my hands, my hospital lanyard hanging around my neck and my Noah's Ark like basket of goodies. Then she abruptly turns around and walks away. I just sort of shrug and go back to putting back the wrong pads. Thanks to a coughing fit, I'm still doing just that when the old lady returns with a man in his 40s. Are you the guy refusing to help my mother? I finally finish putting away those pads and turn around and face the 40 year old son. The old lady is standing there a little behind him with a decidedly smug look on his face. I say, look guys, I honestly don't know where the product that you're mentioning is. I'm just here for my meds and I'm doing a little shopping. The 40 year old son shakes his head a bit and then gets right into my personal space. The old lady shuffles forward with him so now we're all too close for comfort in this cramped dial. Look son it's one thing to be lazy but don't be stupid too. If you're gonna slack off at least take off the evidence. And with that he reached out and grabbed my lanyard with a hard yank. Now my fellow hospital peeps will be aware that we wear breakaway lanyards so that patients can't strangle us. So I think he was maybe trying to give me a jolt. Gotta get those lazy Gen Y people to pay attention, don't you know? But all he ended up with was my hospital ID. Now at this point, I'm getting angry. Certain swear words are about to get spoken, but abruptly, my body lets me know that I'm gonna sneeze. Like the good hospital pleb I am, my arm comes up so I can sneeze into my elbow. 
The 40-year-old son is still confused by the breakaway lanyard and sees this and thinks that I'm throwing the world's worst punch. He grabs my arm with his left hand and we share a brief look of confusion before my eyes start to cross. Now here is where my bag of cares, which is already depleted by weeks without a break, completely runs dry. I don't turn away like a polite person. Nope, I take aim. The sneeze is a big one. I spray the 40-year-old son with snot and saliva. The first salvo of sinus infection green paints his face and the second his coat. The 40-year-old son lets go of my arm and I kind of swivel so the third blast catches the old lady a glancing blow. I come out of the head rush you get after sneezing to see the 40-year-old son dry retching. I'm pretty sure my phlegm sneeze got into his mouth and the old lady sort of just staring at me with her mouth doing that goldfish thing. My ID is on the floor. The 40-year-old son must have dropped it. So I grab it, grab my basket, and push past the 40-year-old son and the old lady while they're still reeling from my biological attack. I turned to them and said, I already told you, I don't work here. I just have the flu. What kind of jerks harass someone with the flu? And with that, I bravely hid right next to the pharmacy desk until my prescription was filled. I really hope the old lady and the 40-year-old son enjoyed that flu season just as much as I did. But hey, at least I didn't puke on them, right? So, am I the jerk? This story reminds me of one we did a long time ago here on the channel where it also took place inside of a pharmacy, and in that case, the other people thought that the original poster was an employee because she was wearing scrubs. She was a nurse, and she was just coming to the pharmacy to pick up her medication, and she actually said it happens all the time. People constantly come up to her in pharmacies and think that she works there for some reason because she's wearing scrubs, I guess. But this story was way more extreme. They just assumed the OP here worked there because he was putting the pads away that were knocked over at the same moment that she came up on him. That and maybe the fact that he was just wearing this lanyard. But the only thing I could visualize the entire time the 40-year-old son was involved was Ash from Overwatch and Bob. I just imagine this old lady saying, Bob, do something. And I also don't think we've ever seen somebody use biological warfare as a counterattack to somebody grabbing them. The OP turned around and just let him have it, sneezing straight into his mouth so he starts gagging. And as one of the top comments said, revenge is a dish best served phlegm. So let me know if you guys think this revenge was justified or was it going way too far since he did have the flu and jerk or not a jerk and why. Before we jump into the next one, if you like Am I the Jerk, you're probably going to love Am I the Genius. Check it out, link down below in the description. Am I the Jerk for using the money that I won in a lottery to finance my own dream vacation across Europe and Asia? On my birthday this year, I treated myself to 50 bucks in lottery tickets and managed to hit one of the huge $50,000 payouts. After taxes, I had $34,000. So I put $7,500 into my wife's car and put the rest into a high interest bank account. I'm planning to switch jobs in early 2020, but first I plan to travel for the month of January and half of February across Asia and Europe. I have never had a proper vacation unless you count weekend trips to Disney World for the kids. And I have really wanted to take the chance to go out there and explore the world. Well, yesterday, my daughter Emily and I were talking about the job movement and the topic of the vacation came up. I told her about how I'm financing it with the lottery. She previously did not know about the winnings and Emily went quiet before saying, instead of wasting 25 grand on a vacation, why not do something practical like maybe spend $5,000 on a vacation and help your daughter not graduate with a mountain of debt. I told her that I'd be happy to co-sign loans for her, but I was only willing to pay an upwards of $10,000 of her education, the amount that I promised her and her brother when they were 13 to 15. She said even after paying that off, she's looking to be at around $29,000 in debt by the time she finishes school. I told her that really sucks, but I reminded her that I offered her community college as an option years ago when she was applying to schools, but she insisted that she didn't want to quote, miss out on the prestige. She got into Dartmouth. I talked to her about how transferring was an option, but she ultimately picked that route. She brought up how the $10,000 I gave Jason, my son, was enough to completely pay for college plus some extra spending change because he got a state scholarship that paid for 100% tuition. She argued how it's not fair that I was essentially willing to pay all of his college but leave her with a mountain of debt. I told her that he'd be able to argue the same thing if she got more money than he did. Ultimately, the line I drew was that both children get equal amounts of money and I can choose how I want to spend my money. End of discussion. I thought it was over, but it turns out that she went and talked to my wife, Amy, about it behind my back. Amy tried to persuade me to 
make it a two to three week vacation as opposed to the 1.5 months I had planned. I told her the same thing I told our daughter and then she got mad and said that I'm being selfish using all of the money for myself, never mind the amount that I put into her car and the fact that she used all of a $5,000 inheritance on cosmetic surgery four years back. I told her this vacation was non-negotiable. Now I have two women in this household giving me passive aggressive looks and eye rolls. I feel they're both acting entitled to my stuff. Am I really being unreasonable here? As an update, I'm not leaving my wife behind. She can go for 10 days. She can't take the full 1.5 months off though. So am I the jerk? Before the OP out of the section where he said that his wife can go for 10 days, I was kind of surprised that he would go on a vacation this long without his family because that's not really something you hear happening too often. It's not that it's wrong or anything. It's just not very common. And I guess to be fair, the kids are not exactly kids. They're adults in college. But one of the responses that thought that everybody was a jerk said might be an unpopular opinion, but you win $50,000 and decide to give chump change to your wife and decide to leave behind all of your familial obligations and go on an expensive vacation. I mean, even for a month and a half, $25,000 for a vacation is outrageous. Spending more is not going to make it better. And I think compromising with 15 grand for the vacation is perfectly doable. That being said, I don't think you should be obligated to spend that on tuition. In fact, I think it'll be unfair to your son. Put it to something for the family or maybe keep it stashed away for an emergency, but I think it's irresponsible to spend all of that on a single vacation. You're not a single man. You have responsibilities and a duty to your family. You chose that life. You can't just run away from that when it's convenient for you. The OP responded to that saying it was really 34 grand after taxes and I feel like you people are missing the fact that I bought my wife a car and perhaps I should put an edit. I don't anticipate spending the full 25 grand on the vacation, though I wouldn't be mad that I did. I just want to make sure I have enough to do everything I want to do and see everything that I want to see. I think the person who responded originally has a point where if they find out that their dad, the OP, gave extra money to the daughter instead of that son, that's going to probably feel pretty unfair to them because maybe the son also wanted to go to Dartmouth but went to the state school instead because he thought he knew what the rules of their arrangement were and if he knew he was going to get more money, he would have tried to go down that path too. I can see how that would lead to a lot of resentment down the line. But let me know how you guys see this. Do you think it's justified that he spends his lottery winnings on his own personal vacation? vacation? Or do you think it's wrong to do so and he should give the money to the daughter? Let me know your thoughts down below and jerk or not a jerk and why. A woman asked me to buy her some food for her and her family. I agreed, but she had way more in mind than I expected. She gathered hundreds of euro worth of groceries and put me on the spot at the register to pay for it all. It went badly. Here's what happened. So a couple weeks ago, I passed my local grocery store. We almost always have at least one woman in front of it begging for money. If I have the time and some spare change, I usually give it to them. That time I had no money at all, only my credit card, which I told the woman who asked me. She then begged me to buy her something to eat for her five children. I, trying to be nice, said yes. In my mind, I would go in and buy her some rice, noodles, or bread, something that could feed the family, but the woman stood up and came in with me. She only spoke very little and broken German, my mother language, so I didn't really understand her. Then she took a cart, which confused me, but I went with it. We went inside the store. At first, she put some normal groceries in the cart. Nothing that I might have selected, but I was still fine with it. Then I started having doubts as she put about six packs of coffee in, saying, for me. I figured that this grocery run was going to give me good karma for the rest of my life, so I begrudgingly didn't complain. We went to the meat aisle and she started putting an insane amount of sausages in the cart. It was then that I thought to myself that she couldn't possibly want me to buy all of that for her, and I tried to tell her that I wouldn't. She only shushed me. And in in hindsight, probably pretended to, didn't understand me. I safely assumed that she only wanted me to pay for part of her groceries and had some money to pay for the rest of it. That assumption was only strengthened by her lack of understanding of German, which led to her often asking me where things were in the store. That made me think that she only needed someone to help her shop. Yes, in hindsight, that was pretty naive, but trust me, it got much worse. We continued shopping in the cart filled. To understand the full audacity of what she was was planning on having me buy? Here's some examples. Shampoo, not only the normal one, but the extra ones for dyed hair, some beauty products, and last but not least, cigarettes. All of that was accompanied by large amounts of food. We then went to the cashier who scanned all the items. At this point, I was sure that she had her own money to pay for all of it. Her and I, meanwhile, packed everything in several large bags. Then the moment came. The cashier announced 240 euro, please, and 
and the woman pointed at me. I was absolutely shell-shocked. The situation was so unreal to me, I couldn't believe it. Immediately, I tried to explain that I couldn't pay for all of that and didn't even have that much money with me. The woman tried a few more times and then just suddenly disappeared from the store. I was left at the cash register with 240 euro worth of groceries, a steady line of people forming behind me, and so I did the only thing that seemed logical. I started to cry. I tearily apologized to the cashier, the people waiting in line, and the emergency supermarket workers called to carry away all of the food and explain the situation. Luckily, everyone was extremely nice and didn't see the fault in me, but I still felt sorry for them. This experience scarred me, but the craziest part is still the audacity of that woman. Sadly, there are some rude people telling me it's my fault because I offered to help her in the first place, etc, etc. I am 19 years old and I suffer from a social anxiety disorder. So saying no to someone is really hard for me and I have trouble voicing my opinion. So if you want to scream at me in the comments, please keep that in mind. With all that said, am I the jerk for not spending 240 euro on this woman's food? This has got to be an awkward situation. Standing there with all that food, cigarettes, shampoo, everything else they put in there, it's off when she realizes that you're not going to pay for it. I think for anyone, even somebody who doesn't have a social anxiety disorder, this would be a very uncomfortable moment. Normally, I would have said, while this whole shopping process was happening, why didn't you clarify or ask her or try and figure out the situation was? But in this case, it was a little bit different. There was a language barrier, which would make this difficult no matter how you do it. And the whole shushing thing really stood out to me too. One of the top responses says, the shushing is the trick. These people use it as a tactic to establish a tipping point, suggesting that they are now in control. It's subtle, but it kind of works. I had a similar experience where I met someone in the street who stopped me and asked me for a few bucks, which I happily gave him. But then he established this authoritative tone where he began shushing me whenever I asked him to let me alone now that I've given him what he asked for. And he would then proceed to raise his voice and talk loudly about how I'm a bad Samaritan if I didn't pay him more to, quote, feed some children. So let me know how you guys see this situation down below and jerk or not a jerk and why. This is a private residence, not a super cuts. This happened many years ago when there was a super cuts in my hometown. Their phone numbers and our number were almost exactly alike except their last digit was different than ours. Now ours had the same three digits in a row at the end. Think like 333 or 777 while their phone number was two of the same digit and then a zero like 330-770. You get the idea. Which means it was very easy to accidentally dial our number instead of theirs if you were dialing too fast. At the time, answering machines weren't as prevalent as they would be a few years later. So when I was forced by my parents to answer the phone, instead of saying hello, I used to say our last name and then residence. That always seemed to get the people who meant to call Supercuts to realize they dialed the wrong number and then i just say, oh yeah, theirs ends in a zero, just dial it a little slower. They thank me and hang up. My mom, for some reason, still insisted on saying hello instead of answering my way, which meant she often got people trying to make appointments for Supercuts. Now, I'd say 99% of the time, they'd accept her from, oh, you've got the wrong number. This is our last name residence. They'd apologize and hang up. One time, a kid in the army called because he'd been on leave and needed a haircut before he went back. He was very disappointed that he called the wrong number. Now, mom happens to be a retired hairstylist and offered to cut his hair for free. She even told him where we lived and how to get there. I can't remember if he showed up or if he just decided to go to Supercuts instead, but one lady did not get it. She kept calling and calling and calling and calling. My mom was the one who answered the first time and every time after. The first time the woman angrily hung up. Then she hung up instantly every single time my mom answered the phone and said, hello. Finally, after what must have been a good 10 or 15 minutes of calling our house, she yelled at my mom and said, would you stop picking up the phone? I'm trying to call Supercuts. We got an answering machine not long after and a couple of years later, Supercuts had shut down that location, so we stopped getting calls for them. I know it's not the most dramatic story compared to some others here, but I thought I'd share this old childhood memory. I hope you all have a nice, Karen-free day. The first thing I wondered is why she would say, would you stop picking up the phone? I'm trying to call Supercuts, but some of the people that responded to this mentioned that this probably involved party lines, and somebody actually broke this down and gave an explanation. They said,
said maybe she grew up with party lines. For the young, this was where there was a short of a phone lines into rural areas. So they'd run the same line to multiple residences, basically like having an extension phone in your neighbor's house. Each residence had its own number, but there was only one physical line. They'd play tricks with line polarity or frequency to get it to ring only in one place, depending on which number you dialed. Or in some areas, they'd all ring, but with a different cadence. For example, if it rang too short and one long, it was yours. If it was one long and one short, it was the neighbor on the left, etc. Only one family could use the line at any given time, so there was a good chance you'd pick up the line, and instead of a dial tone, you'd hear some other person's conversation going on. You were supposed to hang up and wait, but often people didn't. You got used to never talking about private stuff on the phone. Somebody else also included a mini story where they said, my dad grew up with one of these, and he had the issue of a nosy farm wife listening to everyone's conversation. One time, he and his friends realized she was listening in. They switched to a conversation being entirely about gossiping on the nosy neighbor lady and she immediately learned her lesson. So that makes a lot more sense as to why this lady would say that and I didn't know they were running the same line into multiple houses back in the day. So let me know if you've ever been in a situation like this where somebody called your house thinking that you were someone else. And don't forget you can always submit your own stories to be featured down below in the link in the description. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications. Put the playlist on in the background to finish listening to all the stories linked at the top of the description. And if you like Am I the Jerk, give Am I the Genius a shot, also linked in the description. Either way, thanks a lot for listening. We'll see you guys next time.